What's up AGTV crew, Mario here, and today we're looking at what might be a massive leap forward in home backup power. This is the Jackery Home Power 3600 Plus. For years, power stations have been great for charging phones or laptops, but they've had clear limits. This claims to be different. Jackery isn't just calling this a big battery, they're calling it a true plug and play essential home backup power solution designed to power your core household appliances, through an outage. So today we're gonna put those bold claims to the test and see if this truly represents the next generation of home power. And a big thank you to Jackery for sponsoring this video and sending this unit out for review. Full disclosure, based on years of great experiences with their other products, I have very high expectations for this one. It's hard to argue with a proven track record, but as always, we're gonna set those expectations aside and let the real world performance and data do the talking. All right, first things first, this beast comes in at 77 pounds, so it's got some serious heft. The dimensions are roughly 19 inches tall, 15 inches wide, and 12 inches deep. But let me show you the key to its design. Oh. It has a luggage style handle and wheels, making that 77 pound weight manageable from the garage right into the kitchen, exactly where you'd need it to be in an outage. The Jackery's layout is very clean. Up front, you've got a bright LCD giving you all of its critical information. Below that, a full selection of ports and the build quality feels top notch. There's no flex or creaking in the chassis. This is clearly built to be a reliable appliance. Okay, let's look at the numbers on the spec sheets because this is where the big claims begin. First up, power. The manual says you're getting a continuous 3,600 watts of output. That surge rating is what we really need to test. It's the key to handling large appliances when their compressors first kick on. For outputs, you have four standard 120 volt, 20 amp outlets and a massive 30 amp TT30 output. That's a fantastic inclusion for heavier duty appliances. Next is capacity. It comes with 3,584 watt hours, but it's expandable all the way up to a staggering 21 kilowatt hours. But for now that 3,500 watt hours is a massive amount of energy and we'll have to see how that translates into real world run times. The battery itself is lithium iron phosphate, which is exactly what you want for safety and longevity. Jackery rates this for 6,000 cycles, claiming a 10 year lifespan. That's a long-term investment so the build quality has to be there to support it. Specs are one thing, but performance is everything. Let's see if this can handle a real world kitchen scenario with our most important appliance. Jackery makes a bold headline claim that this can power a fridge for a family of three for up to 14 days. We of course don't have two weeks, but we have it hooked up and I'll monitor its consumption for the next hour or so and let you know how much power it used. Well guys, it's been about an hour and I've consumed 3% of the internal capacity of this battery. That's about 90 watt hours, which is a little more than I expected. And that led me to do a little bit of research. That 14 day claim is based off of the 21 kilowatt hour maximum expansion capability. So if you wanna be able to do that, you would have to buy all of those additional batteries. Realistically, this thing's gonna run for one, maybe two days max by itself. But later in the video, I'll test the solar panel. And with that solar panel, we'll be able to put a lot of energy back into the power station, which could increase that runtime almost indefinitely. It is just absolutely too nice and beautiful outside to do any testing in the studio. So I wanted to bring this out to the minivan camper to do the rest of the kitchen tests. Before I get to the van though, I want to point something out about these wheels. The wheels actually handle this terrain pretty good. There's quite a bit of vibration. And so what I hope is inside of the device, there's plenty of isolation so that vibration is not going to cause any internal damage. Now, if this is your first time seeing a minivan camper, please don't be alarmed. It's essentially a mini RV in which I have a microwave. I have this electric kettle and I have a mini Keurig coffee maker. Between all of these things, I should be able to pull all of the power that the Jackery 3600 Plus has. Perfect fit. I went ahead and primed all of these devices with a little bit of water, that way I don't burn them out. To get this test going, let's go ahead and power up the device. 
I'm gonna start the AC inverter, simple touch of the button, and then crank up this water kettle to its 1500 watt load. To keep the party going, let's get the Keurig running. This little Keurig I got from Target, not very bad at all. Power station bumps straight up to about 2000 watts. And then the last thing I wanna add into this equation is of course my microwave. With all in, we're pulling 3200 watts, which is more than its rated single 2400 watt output but less than its 3,600 watt maximum continuous load. Everything is running as designed. The fan has kicked on on this Jackery. My Keurig is just about complete brewing its cup of coffee. It has stopped heating, I'm back down to 2,000 watts, and that is an absolute success for that AC inverter. In fact, I thought that sound was the fan and the Jackery kicking on, but it was actually the microwave running. This thing is almost dead silent. I would pull out my decibel meter, but I have to have my head literally five inches from the fan in order to hear it running. We've done all this testing so far, but that leaves one question that we still need to answer. How do we recharge or power this thing indefinitely when we're off grid? And that's where what is inside of this bag comes into play. Inside this carrying case is, depending on how you look at it, either six Solar Saga 85s or one Solar Saga 500X. We have 10 hinges. We've also got eight stakes and then this super long looking cable. I'll measure this cable in a few minutes as we get to testing. And of course, this is a little strange for me, but it does make sense because you can use this system modularly. It does come with the screws required to mount all those panels together in series. So these hinges are very interesting. When you have everything set up together, it's gonna sit in this kind of W or saw configuration. That's to allow, because these are dual-sided solar panels, that's to allow some of that that sunlight from the back to reflect up into the panel and make them more efficient. It's a very interesting design that I've never seen before, but it actually makes quite a bit of sense. And the last thing I would say is these hinges actually feel very high quality. Assembling the Solar Saga 500X isn't super difficult. I screwed all of the joints together, slowly connected this Anderson PowerPole connections for all five of the panels. And then I got to the last panel. I must have gotten a little sloppy. I put this one on the incorrect direction. So I'm gonna get this fixed up and then we'll head out into the sun and see how much power we can get out of the solar panel. Problem solved. To test the solar panels, I'm gonna first set it up flat on the ground in a configuration that I think most people will use it. And then we will get a reading, maybe with it uh, leaned up against the van or something like that. But the next thing I wanna know is how long is this cable? The length of this cable will essentially tell me how far I can put the solar panel from my minivan camper. Using the Armo meter, it's about 18 feet in length. Now, Jackery is known to use these 80-20 DC inputs. They're essentially the only holdout that I can think of that still uses this style of input. That's not necessarily a showstopper, but keep that in mind that whatever solar panels you get, if you don't get the 500X or any of their Solar Saga panels, you will have to make sure that you find something that's compatible with the Jackery device. Devices. So in our pretty standard configuration, I'm currently getting about 150 watts into the Jackery. Now keep in mind, it's only about 9 a.m. Central Time. So we're quite a few hours from our maximum solar output. But what I'm gonna do now is lift the solar panels up just a little bit, see if that increases the input for those solar panels. The next fairly easy configuration is standing them up right on their sides. Now keep in mind, this configuration is a tipping hazard. I don't feel like the solar panels will get damaged, but any strong gusts of wind will certainly knock them over. But in this configuration, I'm getting over 300 watts and 300 watts is actually not bad for this solar panel configuration. But what I wanna do now is see if I can angle it and get as close as possible to that expected 450 watt maximum output in ideal conditions from those solar panels. One of my initial concerns with this configuration is maybe that these panels would be breakable or fragile. And I have them propped up with this chair, not the best setup, but that is one note. If you do wanna raise or lower these, there isn't any dedicated kickstand to use for that purpose. And after taking all of that into consideration, I'm getting about 340 watts with this setup kind of haphazardly on the ground right here. And with this current setup, it says it's gonna take just over six and a half hours 
as is right now to top off the power station. So what I'm gonna do is let this thing sit here for about an hour, come back and see, you know, after one hour, how much power did I get? Sun's rising, I've got ideal conditions, it's not a cloudy day at all. And so hopefully get plenty of power from this portable power station and solar panel configuration. So at 10.30, one hour later with that perfect sunshine, we were at 56%, but now it's 11.30 a.m. So another hour after that, I've only recovered another 2%. Not too bad, but it's starting to rain. So let me get all this stuff put up, get back in the studio to do the battery capacity rundown test. The system brings in a pretty respectable, just under 1700 watts. And at this rate, it says it can take another 1.3 hours or one hour 18 minutes to top off to 100% from just about 60% state of charge. So about 40% for 1.3 hours. At that rate, it should take about three or four hours to get 100% from a zero state of charge using the wall outlet. To conduct a battery capacity rundown test, I ran this heat gun at about 700 watts until complete. While the test was running, I did hook up the app I, it took about maybe two minutes for the app to get connected, but once it was connected, I was able to see all of the information. And then I also checked to make sure that I had the latest firmware. And what really surprised me from the rundown test was that I got 3,270 watt hours out of that internal battery, which equates to over 91% which is a very high return for any of the power stations that I've tested on this channel. We verified the battery capacity, the solar charging, and the insane power output. But there's one more critical feature that we need to talk about, especially for anybody considering this for home backup, the uninterruptible power supply or UPS. Now the spec sheet claims the HP 3600 Plus can switch from wall power to battery power in less than 10 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast. For anyone working from home with a desktop computer or running sensitive equipment like a server or medical device, a seamless switchover means a power flicker won't cause you to lose your work or disrupt critical functions. It's a premium feature that really separates a basic power station from a true home backup system and it's a huge part of this unit's value proposition. So after all of these tests, what's my final verdict on the Jackery Home Power 3600 Plus? At the start of this video, I said that based on my past experiences with Jackery, I had very high expectations for this unit. And I can honestly say it did not disappoint. The performance here is undeniable. Let's break it down into some pros and cons. The pros. First, the power output is massive. 3,600 watts continuous handled everything I threw at it in the van without flinching. Second, the battery capacity is real and the efficiency is top tier. We verified over 91% efficiency, giving you 3,270 watt hours, which is a fantastic result. And finally, it is shockingly quiet. As you heard, or rather didn't hear in the van test, the microwave was significantly louder than the power station's fans, even under that huge load. Now it's not perfect, there are a few cons. At 77 pounds, it's not exactly light, but the handle and wheels do make it manageable. However, that is a consideration if you plan to lift this in and out of a vehicle. And my biggest con is the solar input. Jackery continues to use that 8020 DC input, which is almost exclusive to the Jackery products nowadays. This means if you have existing solar panels from other manufacturers, you might have compatibility issues, which is a definite consideration if you aren't already in the Jackery ecosystem. So who exactly is this for? If you're a casual weekend camper, this is probably overkill. But if you're a homeowner looking for some serious, silent, and incredibly capable gas generator alternative for emergency backup, this is a top tier solution. If you're a full-time van lifer or building out an RV and need a single unit that can power everything, the performance we verified today makes this an absolute contender. Let me know what you think in the comments. What would you power with this absolute beast? As always, thank you for watching Adventure Gear TV. Be safe and I'll see you in the next one.